All right, bro. We'll get to you know the Ben Simmons stuff, and there's a lot of things we need to get to. But you know, your and my friend Charles Barkley jumped on with my I don't know if you know this former mentor Bob Costas, a man who wrote me a letter of recommendation to Syracuse University. True story. Great man. Wow. Arguably the greatest sports journalist ever. And they spent four yes. minutes talking yes. nonsense about LeBron. So, but if, if we don't have to play the sound. Barkley was like, listen, basically there's beauty in the struggle. LeBron ran from the struggle. You know, it's one of the things he, he said, you know, Michael didn't run from the struggle. And then he talked about how impressive Giannis's title was. Your thoughts before I give mine and we go back and forth on it on Barkley's take on LeBron and him always trying to stack the deck, as he put it. Well, in the context of that, he said he's got Jordan and Kobe ahead of LeBron, presumably because of what you just said. I, as you know, I've got Jordan one, LeBron two. Uh, LeBron playing on these super teams isn't like a huge factor and why I've got Jordan ahead of him. And the evidence is that I've got LeBron ahead of everybody else and a lot of other guys that didn't play on super teams. I still have LeBron ahead of them. I, I will say this. I do think the most impressive way to win is through the struggle, the Jordan, the Isaiah Thomas, the Giannis way. But it is not easy. I don't downplay winning it on a super team. And Barkley should know that more than anyone else how it is not easy even go. to win it when you have other superstars with you. He was drafted to a Philadelphia 76ers team that was two years That's removed right. from sweeping Showtime. All right, sweeping Magic and Kareem. And when Barkley got there, Moses Malone was still a 24 and 13 guy. Dr. J was getting That's older, right. but he averaged 20 Barkley's rookie year. Andrew Tony, Maurice Cheeks, they played together for a few years never got to the finals. Then an older Barkley goes to join Olajuwon, Ch- Clyde Drexler in Houston. They played two years together, don't w- get to the finals. And then Pippen replaces Drexler. So they got Scotty Pippen, Akeem Olajuwon, and Charles Barkley, and they get bounced in the first round. So Barkley should know um, better than anyone that even playing with other superstars is not easy and still does not guarantee you a championship. Well, and let's, there's a few things here. One is, you mentioned it, people, the 83 Sixers might have been the greatest team ever. It's at least in the argument. Barkley got drafted in the by the 85 yeah. Sixers. He's there, he's there two years later. The whole core is still there. The first year they make the conference finals, never make it back there. And I think it's noteworthy that then they, you know, a few years later, they trade Moses. Dr. J retires. In 92, all of a sudden, the Sixers miss the playoffs. And Barkley's like, I'm getting out of here. And in fact, Phoenix be great. <laughs> They've won 54 years in a row. And then in Phoenix, after they make the finals immediately, and Barkley was spectacular, they lose back-to-back years in seven to Houston. And Barkley's like, I want to go play there. And But the Kobe thing is the thing that bothers me. And this is not disrespectful to the late, great Kobe Bryant. Him putting him but ahead of, there ahead was no of LeBron? S- well, with the, with the rationale being partly, will LeBron stack the deck? You don't need to stack a deck if you're drafted to a team with Shaquille O'Neal. And Broussard, tell right. me if I have my history wrong here. But when Shaq left and Kobe missed the playoffs and then had back-to-back first-round exits... This is back when you worked at the other network. Didn't he go on Stephen A. Smith's right. radio show and say, I think I should be traded? Once Kobe had a struggle, once, once all of a sudden Kobe was dealing with what LeBron had dealt with for seven years in Cleveland. It's like, I've got Ira Nubel, you've got Sasha Pavlovich. In fact, I think they both had Sasha Pavlovich at one point in time. This sucks. Kobe right. wanted out. <laughs> like, that did happen, no, right? No, you're right. People forget that, and they, they, they throw Kobe in that group with Jordan, and I say, oh, he went through the struggle. Kobe demanded a trade. Kobe wanted out. Remember, he was talking about going to the Bulls. There was even talk he might go to the Clippers. But you're right. He gets drafted Clippers. to the team with Shaq. And, and, and that, look, Magic gets drafted to the team with Kareem. Kareem was the league MVP Magic's rookie year. 
Berg is drafted. It was a bad Boston team that drafted Berg, but they still had several Hall of Famers who were past their prime. Tiny Archibald, Dave Cowens, Pistol Pete. Uh, but the next year, you know, you get McHale and Parrish and these others, and Berg goes on the run. So the, LeBron, look, he gave Cleveland seven years for them to put other stars around him or try to win, and they didn't. So he said, let me go do it, and he did. And, and it's worked out for him. And I'll say this too, Nick, because a lot of people might not know this because LeBron is like the king recruiter now. He's the best player recruiter we've ever seen in NBA history. All right. But early in his career, he didn't recruit. And that may have hurt him because, remember, Michael, Michael Red was a free agent, I believe, 06. Uh, Ray Allen was a free agent. And LeBron really wasn't interested in recruiting, guys. I've talked to him early in his career. I think he felt like me, you, Kyle Hurd, and Skip Bayless could have won a championship with yeah. LeBron. I think he was that certain he was going to win it. And so early in his career, he didn't recruit. All he did when Michael Red was a free agent. Red was from Columbus, Ohio. He would have wanted to play for the Cavs. And LeBron just made like a generic video for the Cavs to show to all the recruits or free agents. And that was it. And had he really tried to go after Michael Red, Red would have went there. Nike was willing to make up the difference in money Red would have to leave on the table. Oh, and well, that's so interesting. Had I didn't LeBron know the Nike done part. that then, they might have been able to win a championship. Who knows? Yeah, and listen, he ba- LeBron basically did take you, me, Colin, and Skip to the finals in 07. I think it'd be tough with Skip. I don't know if Skip would actually pass the ball to LeBron, so that could screw some things up. But aside from that, that's basically what he did in 07. But we don't have to talk about we, – we can move on from there. All right, let's talk with Ben Simmons. And I actually – because I haven't talked with you about this. So Ben Simmons reportedly is, you know, not talking to the Sixers. And we'll start there. Do you have a problem with that? Because I don't. Like, that's what agents are for. I like I, the, there's a, if you are having you're in conflict with your employer and you're in our business or in pro sports, I, I think it's totally fine to be like, talk to my agent. Do you have a problem with it? Right. I don't have a problem with the agent in this case, Rich Paul, being the, the main communicator. We all do that. You know, when we negotiate our contracts, our agents do it. But if the team is reaching out to Ben trying to help him with his workouts, trying to help him with his shooting. If Joel Embiid is reaching out and he's not answering the phone or not answering their texts or whatever, he's ghosted them, I do have a problem with that. And I don't think they should be at odds. I do get that Ben is looking at this like Doc Rivers said he's not sure he can win a championship with me. All right. Joel Embiid pointed out to my play when I pass the ball to Matisse Thibel instead of shooting a layup as the turning point of the game in the, in the series defining moment. So I get why Ben would be upset, but I think Ben has to go past that and look in the mirror and the way, if he is ghosting them and not responding to text, not responding to their ideas about how he should be working out this summer, then I think that is a refusal or an unwillingness to look in the mirror. I don't think he, like, even though, and he's justified in looking at what Doc said and looking at what MB said, but ultimately I think Ben needs to look in the mirror. Ben needs to ultimately say, you know, I did shoot 34% from the free throw line in the playoffs. I, I haven't been shooting jumpers like I do in the off season when I'm playing these pickup games. I, I yeah. did run from the basketball. No matter how good you are, Nick, Jordan, LeBron, Kareem, whoever, you always, uh, people in our business, you always need to be able to look in the mirror and see where you fell short and then go to fix it. And what's transpiring right now, if the reports are true, I don't think that that just shows me Ben is not yet looking in the mirror and realizing for what all all they said, it might have been wrong. But I'm, I'm, I was a big part of the problem. I didn't do my job. So the part of this report also was that he's good with the California teams, which there's four teams in California. The Lakers can't trade for him. The Clippers can't trade for him because neither of them have draft picks. I guess the Kings could, 
and you know De'Aaron Fox. I doubt and he's stuff, doing it with but the Kings. I, too. I, I was gonna right. That's what I was gonna say. Is but with respect to my <laughs> wife's hometown, I don't know if Ben Simmons like signed me up for Sacramento. So it seems like we're talking Golden State, and there was a report that Daryl asked for the two picks, seven and fourteen, plus two future picks, Wiseman and Wiggins for Simmons. <laughs> and the almost universal response was, that is an ridiculous ask by Daryl Morey. Broussard, I would have done that if I'm Golden State. If I'm Golden State, I look at the West, and I, you think, I, okay, so let's talk about oh, this. It, I look at the I, West, I and I say, you're, you're, you're as only, crazy as Morey. <laughs> okay, but well, hold on. If you're Golden State, You look at the West, there's only one team clearly better than you in the Lakers. With that said, Kuminga is 18 years old. Moody is 19 years old. They're not going to play a single important playoff minute for you this year. Steph is 33, turning 34. Clay, part of his value, has been locked down defense. There is no way to know if Clay is going to come back anything close to that level of defender after those devastating injuries. You can win right now. If you have Steph, Clay, Ben, and Draymond, that is a championship contender. Why wouldn't you do that if you're Golden State? Why wouldn't you pay a premium to try to win in Steph Curry's window? Well, you, you know uh, that Daryl's history is this is how he starts off trade negotiations, right? He asks for the moon, the sun, the stars, the sky, everything, and you work your way down. So I I wouldn't be surprised if they work their way down. Here's the thing, Nick, though, and and I love Draymond. If I've got Ben Simmons, I don't want want Ben Simmons and Draymond on the same team because Ben is just a better, younger version of Draymond. And so to me, Draymond needs to be in that deal. And, and, and I not so I and I think Draymond would actually be good for the Sixers because they need a leader in the locker room. He's a great defender, so they wouldn't lose as much there. And you know, so I think that would be good. I mean, they got to get more, but Draymond to me has to be in that. I get it. He's the inspirational leader of the Warriors and all of that, but he is older, and Ben is a younger, better version of him right now. And so I, I do think Golden State would love to get Ben. I think he'd be a terrific fit. But I think Draymond has to be a part of that. And you and I, I just think what you, the 7, the 14, the Wiggins and Wiseman, that's way too much. I'd love to keep Wiseman if I can if I'm Golden State. But if he has to go in the deal, so oh. be it. You and I, I know you got Wiggins on like your 89th tier I was of, of your NBA player yeah, picks and all that. But That's Wiggins, why. I couldn't figure yeah, out why you hated that I, I trade. I think but I've it's convinced you. You got Wiggins as a great player. You've got Wiggins as friends no, no, of the fame. I forgot about your love for I, Wiggins. I have I convinced forgot. you. You you got to admit you have come over to my side as a third scoring option, and as the fourth or fifth best player on the team. You can't be the Andrew Wiggins. He had a nice year. He'll give me eighteen <laughs> to twenty points, and he played really good defense. You know he played really good defense. So Wiggins really good in defense. the spot he's I in, I love him. I love him. So, But if I had to give him up for Simmons, I would grudgingly. I got to get something back from Philly, some shooting, some score, something like that. But I would love to see Ben Simmons in Golden State. But don't you think – you don't think Draymond has to go? Because I don't think those two play well, together. I don't think Daryl – two I don't, nine I, shooters. I get it. Two non-shooters, but paired with the two best shooters in basketball, I guess it depends on who your fifth starter is. I think you could make it. I just think you would have the two best shooters in basketball and arguably the two best defenders in basketball in Draymond and Ben. Like, I think that's a tough team. I think that's a dangerous team. And I think the West, aside from the Lakers with Kawhi injured, there's nobody in the West that really should scare the Warriors aside from the Lakers. Broussard, you've worked triple duty all week. Yeah, I, I'll let you do a great job on Undisputed. And now you're helping me out today, so I'll let you go. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Chris. Have a great weekend, brother. All right, brother. Have a good weekend. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.